EMP is the catalyst to create every survival scenario you can come up with. Every single one of them. Exactly. <laughs> What's up, guys? What is going on, Curran? Oh, man, another day in paradise, keeping my eye on the sky, you know what I mean? Seriously. So. Yeah, you, that, these days, you got to keep your eye on the sky, and uh, yeah, that, that's probably the best course of action mm-hmm. right now. <laughs> yeah, really, really. So there's a lot of buzz about EMPs, right? So mm-hmm. let's let's uh, let's dig into it a little bit, since we're all preppers here, and, and we, we try to stay prepared for things and emp is kind of a freaky thing right there's a lot of misnomers about it there's a lot of speculation about it and honestly we don't really know a whole heck of a lot about it right i mean Mm -hmm. man-made versus you know a solar flare or naturally occurring emps yeah man emps it's so complicated it's super technical and and a lot of it goes right over our heads but i think we can kind of get the basics of what they are so we're understanding kind of what the threat is and why it's even a threat i think it's super important so um yeah do you want to take that yeah right now i think electromagnetic pulses uh they're kind of one of the more exciting things uh, in the prepping community just because it's kind of the unknown and it's a it's it's could potentially be a huge event so I mean, what yeah. it is, there's naturally occurring electromagnetic waves, and it can be either uh, caused by a weapon or it can be caused by the sun, which is kind of crazy. But um, both of them can be pretty devastating to uh, a large area. And, yeah. you know, lately in the news and <laughs> with whatever's going on up in the skies, you know, I think it's kind of led to a little more uh, scare about the potential of that being used as a weapon over the United States and you know different countries have been developing them and looking at them we've studied them since you know for the 60s the effect that it can have on our daily lives it could wipe out the electrical grid and you know what it can do to us is is what probably worries us the most I mean of course as preppers we've always talked about EMPs and stuff and I think a lot of it mostly has been in relation to a solar event Mm-hmm. Right, because it seems like a solar event is probably more likely than a nuclear event. However, in recent weeks, yeah, that seems to have flipped. It's starting to raise eyebrows. Right, it's not like you know what's coming. You can prepare for it. Be it civil unrest is sweeping across the nation. You know what's going on. But an EMP is okay. The buzzer has sounded. The game is on, and everybody's playing, whether you want to play or not. Yeah, mm-hmm. that is the scary part about the whole thing is it's kind of completely unexpected we can't predict when it's going to happen and it just does so briefly what an emp is right okay i'll give you my understanding of it Mm because there's tons of of different Mm -hmm. understandings obviously but um it's an event that that happens a a high altitude uh, electromagnetic pulse is going to excite the electrons in the and i'm talking about in nanos like nanosecond like Mm -hmm. immediately right so basically it charges you the air around you. So anything that can act like an antenna, be it power lines um, that are not buried, your pocket knife sitting next to your phone. <laughs> I mean, I- anything that can become an antenna. So all these things get get excited. Those electrons start moving, which creates current. So different things can handle certain amounts of current. That's why we have different size uh, gauge wire for different types of uh, of amp draws that, that we're using, be it in our homes, be it through our electronics or computers and everything, different size wire. So it destroys them and then they don't work. I'm glad that we're talking about it because a lot of people don't understand what it is or that it's even a threat, right? Up to and including our own government sometimes. You know what I mean? Um, and so I think it's yeah. great that we're having those discussions as preppers to you know, start talking about what does it mean, what could happen, what should we do to prepare ourselves for these situations? Because, man, it could be like a total, you know, devastating catastrophe. It's not like this little yeah. thing, you know. And it's not like even if a bomb drops on New York City, that's that's horrible. It's like the worst thing you can think of, right? But 
that affects New York City. A high altitude EMP could in- affect the entire country. It could just wipe out the entire grid, and in an instant, we're we're back 150 years. We're we're living, you know, yeah. um, like our ancestors did. We don't have electricity. We don't have a, a financial system. We don't have a transportation system. There's so much yeah. that it can affect that. That's why I feel like it's it's a super important topic, especially to preppers as we're trying to, you know, navigate our preparedness. Like, how do we get prepared for all these other things? And this is like the mother of all preparedness scenarios right. because it takes you all the way back. It takes everything. Yeah. And the thing is, is like I've heard some people say, well, there's nothing I can do about it happening. There's nothing I can do to predict it happening. So what's the point? Am I going to walk around with my phone in a Faraday bag all the time? I mean, <laughs> Yeah. No, you're, you're probably not. I know right. I'm not. I mean, you can't use your phone if it's sitting in a Faraday bag. Well, the point is, yeah, it's going to be the catalyst that triggers all sorts of things. Mm-hmm. It's going to trigger civil unrest. People get hungry and they don't and they can't eat. Man, it's it's going to get bad quick. It kickstarts all the all the preps, if you will, or all the thought processes in preparing when it comes to food, when it comes to water, when it comes to shelter, when it comes to protection, the whole nine yards. According to, you know, military experts here in the U.S., a successful EMP attack over the East Coast would eventually kill 90 percent of the population on the East Coast within a year of the attack. Again, it could take up to 18 months to restore electricity and social order at that point. So this is it's a serious thing if it happens. You got to think about it. So I found this here. It says around 99 nuclear reactors would likely melt down without electricity to cool them. Wow. And about 4.1 million people would have to displace from the areas around those plants. So that's what the EMP is so scary because there's so many aspects of our life that it affects. And yeah, like like a nuclear meltdown. Let's just add it to the list of this EMP issue, you know, because here's the thing. Right. So I've worked at nuclear plants for as a children mechanic. They use chilled water systems to cool the uh, the rods. You know, the, the, the rods are in in water, keeps it cool. So like everybody that sees like the towers outside a nuclear plant, it's got steam coming out of it. Some people think it's smoke. It's not smoke. It's steam. That is the water being cooled back down the condenser water to go back to the chillers to keep those rods cool. So no electricity, no pumps. Right. No chiller running. So nuclear power plants do have redundancy. Nuclear power power plants do have diesel generators. They have backup chillers. They have they have tons of redundancy. Like four or five and, sale, fail safes, right? Yeah, I mean they've got fail safe on top of fail safe on top right. of fail safe. However, if those reactors can't be cooled, bad yeah. things happen. Make the whole situation even worse um, for our health number one, but also the time to get this stuff back up and running. I right. Mean, you're yeah. basically going to have to, I mean, that whole place that is going to be to abandoned. Start. Yeah, exactly. It, yeah. I mean, it's not like let's go bulldoze it down and rebuild it. No, yeah. we yeah. got to relocate. Right. This area is mm-hmm. no good. <laughs> yeah, so Forever. That's just <laughs> one. East Coast. That's one more thing. If you live within one of those boundaries with those uh, nuclear reactors, that you have to worry about. In, in you an may EMP. never be able to go back. Yeah, there, there's some <laughs> estimates that say up to ten years to that's get everything insane. back online, depending on how bad the EMP is. But I mean, yeah. that, that nuclear situation just. Come, I mean, obviously, I hope if you live near a nuclear plant, you have a bug out plan you have in have place let alone if we're in an emp situation but it's just one more thing yeah. if an emp happens you gotta leave you don't want to be uh, just you know sheltering in place in your basement as the radiation you know waves yeah. over your house a lot of nuclear power plants a lot of them are in fairly rural areas obviously right. yeah. um, most of them are by rivers because some of them use the river water to help with the cooling system if a massive situation happens now you now you're getting tainted water supply into your river yeah exactly um the higher it's crazy to think of all the different effects it's it's all of it dude it's all of it that that's the thing an emp is the catalyst to create every survival scenario Mm -hmm. it really is that's every single one of them exactly right and and it's funny every one of them (laughs) Because a lot of people are like, look, you know, cooler heads are going to prevail. World War III is not going to happen. Maybe that's the case, right? But again, 
We cannot control what the sun does. We can't control a coronal mass ejection that happens. I mean, this did happen. The biggest coronal mass ejection in recorded history was like in 1859. It was called the Carrington event. If you haven't read about this, it is insane and you should go read about it because what it did yeah. was it was bonkers. It lit the sky up. Dude. Yeah. Like the entire sky had like Aurora, Aurora Aurora lights. All, yeah. Yeah, all over. Everywhere. It Florida. It, it caused Florida it caused sparks at uh telegraph stations. It caused fires. It, it, it's one of those things and it just took out everything. They say if an event like the Carrington event happened today, Again, it would be total devastation of our power grid. And again, uh, that 90% of people within a year would probably be dead. That's what the research yeah. says anyways. So again, you yeah. cannot control the sun. It's going to happen at some point. The, I think the statistics are every decade, there's a 12 to 24% chance of a, um, a solar flare large enough to, to cause some sort of you know, electrical interference here, uh, like an EMP. Yeah. And we are about a hundred years past due right now. So yeah, we're past due yeah, for a lot that, of things. Well, God, we get us started <laughs> on that topic. But yeah, so the the whole solar side of it. What's interesting about the solar, you know, a, a solar mass ejection would be that could potentially be dang near completely global as well. Yeah, right, right. So you're not only talking about, say, a, you know, a country or a continent that gets affected, and that area may only be affected eighty percent. Mm -hmm. um, we're talking about global at this point. There's a lot of misconceptions. I think that people think that okay, it happens, everything gets fried, nothing's ever going to work again. I don't one hundred percent believe that. There's a lot of different factors. Like, say, you were in a parking garage in your vehicle with your cell phone sitting beside you on your center console in your vehicle in a parking garage. Is your cell phone going to be and is your vehicle going to be affected in the same way that one parked out on the street is going to be? Mm -hmm. um, I don't believe it, it will. Now, if the power goes out, your cell phone is not going to work because the daggone cell service isn't going to have power to function. I mean, so clearly you're not going to be able to use cell service, but is it going to fry your phone where you can't turn your phone on and, you know, look at what data you have stored in your phone? I don't 100% believe that's the case. However, your cell phone's not going to work. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just not going to happen because if the cell service isn't working, your cell phone's not going to work. It's a freaky thing, right? But I don't think it's all, I mean, do you guys think it's all encompassing? Like, I mean... It, no, I don't. I don't think everything it doesn't make sense that it would be. Yeah, the the hard yeah. part is our data is pretty incomplete. You know, a lot of the tests that they've run. I think the last one they they ran on vehicles was like in two thousand two. With you know, older the newest vehicle was like a two thousand one or something. And um, mm -hmm. so that data isn't super complete. Um, I was actually talking with Jonathan Hollerman this week. So he's he's a a former SEER instructor. This guy is on the Electromagnetic Pulse EMP Commission. Uh, he's written several books. Uh, this dude knows what he's talking about in this. And he's like, in his estimation, he thinks about 30% of vehicles are going to be inoperable. Um, and that, you know, this is from all the data that he can gather from all these different places. About another 10% are going to have some electrical issues, but will probably run. Um, and the rest mm -hmm. we just don't know about. Um, so it's, it's, that's right. the, the thing about EMPs. It's such an unknown. Um, it could be all, yeah. it could be nothing. It could be somewhere in between. I mean, it's probably going to be somewhere in between, you know? Um, so yeah, right. it's, it's, there's, there's a lot of misconceptions, a lot of preppers, a lot of people out there on YouTube. It's like, oh, it's going to be complete grid down. The second that thing goes off, like maybe we don't know, yeah. you know, I believe the, 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 the grid speaking as far as the, the electrical power and stuff like that is concerned. Um, definitely will be affected um, in in some way. Is it mm -hmm. super major? I don't know. Would it, would it be up in you know a day or two, possibly? Because I mean, here's the thing: a lot of uh, stuff has gone digital now, even in the control age that we're in. When it comes to controlling our electronics, right? You know, mm -hmm. you, you look like you know you look at like old old movies and stuff like that, where the guys are over there freaking turn it on this giant breaker you know a lot of that stuff now is not operable anymore they don't use it it's all digitally controlled yeah digital devices are very very susceptible to an emp i mean to the point where when i was a chiller mechanic i worked in a lot of um areas where 
some telecommunications areas that were uh, Ethernet based, um, like big computer rooms and like static electricity is a big deal. Mm-hmm. Like you had to go through these certain rooms and you had to touch certain things to, to be sure that you weren't, you know, going to create any static. You had some places you had to put on uh, a certain type of uh, booties over your shoes that had like metal Mm-hmm. Uh, copper uh, wiring in it that would help keep you grounded to the floor while you're walking around in there. Because if you touch a daggone computer rack and there's Zap a spark, it take the whole daggone building down. Right? I'd so, love to see Curran in booties, though. <laughs> I'm pretty freaking sweet in booties. <laughs> that's man. a that's a dream of mine. Curran in booties. Oh, yeah. Anyways, Curran in booties. Especially <laughs> when I had to go to like places that had. Uh, like food and stuff like that. I always had to put like the beard net on. That was really cool. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but um, I guess my point is, is if, if things like that, if computer systems, if, if data centers, if all that kind of stuff that is digitally controlled is susceptible to a, a freaking static electricity mm-hmm. charge, holy crap, what's going to happen if we have a, a high altitude EMP? Yeah, um, I mean, and let alone that a lot of the components in our power grid, transformers and things like that, they're made in China. Yeah. Like, how crazy is that? Yeah. <laughs> that That's the thing, man. Like, you know, you, you get people get on this, oh, is that made in China, this made in China? You You have no idea how much we have that is made in China. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean... I'll drive a Ford. Well, guess what? 98% of what's in that dashboard wasn't made here in America. I promise yeah. you that. Yeah. Um, so, um, and, and that goes, that goes across everything. I mean, I mean, we're, we're, we're using, uh, equipment now to do this. That was not made here. In America. Right. I mean, it just, it just is what it is. Everything is connected now. Mm-hmm. So that being said, worst case scenario, Let's say an EMP happens, the grid goes down, it's lights out, computers aren't working, anything you know, to have to do with your dwelling is not working that, that, that has power to it. Now, does that mean that everything got fried? No. Does that mean that if you have a generator available, you can run it? Yeah. Is some stuff going to be fried? Maybe. You know, if it's unplugged, it's probably going to be fine. You know, some things are pretty robust, you know, can handle. I mean, if, if something's got good enough uh grounding and good enough insulation and, and proper wire sizing and things like that, everything's not going to fry. So you may be able to run certain things, but then are you prepared for that? Do you have a generator? Do you have fuel to run the generator? It's a big deal. Like everybody worries about, and I started it off talking about the cell phone and stuff like that. Cause I guess that's the easiest thing to bring up because I think that's what everybody's got attached to their hip. No pun intended. Um, but what happens when people are hungry? What happens when there's no law and order? What happens when first responders can't communicate? Now we're getting into real nitty gritty stuff. Yeah, I like, mean, a the, lot of people the think... EMP isn't the, <laughs> no. isn't the subject anymore, right? <laughs> no, exactly. yeah, it's like the, the EMP doesn't hurt you. It's everything that it right. does, right? I mean, to just think yeah. about a lot of people are like, oh, well, FEMA, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna get together. They're gonna, they're gonna start to make thing the wheels turn in the nation, but. How effective is FEMA going to be when they can't communicate with each other, with, when they can't communicate with any other uh, government Dude, entities? How effective can they be when they can? Exactly. Look at Hurricane, look at hurricane Katrina. How long, mm-hmm. did it, how long was Hurricane Katrina, the victims and the damage done by Hurricane Katrina, how long did that take mm-hmm. to get back to some normalcy? Mm-hmm. Months. Right. That's localized there mm-hmm. we're talking about national we're talking about or region you know regional yeah. level to national level possibly national yeah. It, yeah so it, here's the thing that that's and i've had people say that to me well you know our government is going to handle it you know we got fema we got red cross we got this we got that okay on a local level okay mm-hmm. i hear you mm-hmm. on a full-blown regional to national level come on man like no, they, there's no way there's no way there's nothing again i talked with with jonathan hollerman this week about that very thing i'm like well, you know 
what are the emergency response plans that that our federal government has in case of an EMP attack or even a solar flare, right? Kind of the same thing. But he's like, uh, he's in, he's in these meetings at really high levels with congressmen and, and other high level officials, and he's like, point blank, they have zero plans for of this. Of course, zero. <laughs> Not one yeah. thing is being done um, to make plans for this. He's like. The only thing I'm going to give them is some very, very um, high-level facilities like Cheyenne Mountain, um, Air Force One. Those have been hardened against um, EMPs, but beyond that, it, it's almost nothing. So yeah. if you're going to be um, – if that's your plan, it's like I'm just going to wait for President Biden to come save me. Uh, it's not going to happen. It's just not. <laughs> you know? No. It's, it's not. And even – at peak efficiency, mm -hmm. even at peak resources, everything's just as, as perfect as can be as far as aid is concerned. On a regional to national level, you're looking at weeks, months, or anything before you even see anybody. Oh, yeah. Because they're not going to be able to communicate well. They're not going to be able to mobilize well. Here's the other thing. Let, let's say a lot of vehicles do get affected at it during an EMP. Let's say this thing happens at rush hour, mm -hmm. right? And let's say 30% of the cars are functional. Where are you going? Everything's right. blocked. Mm -hmm. You can't get by because there's freaking 18 wheelers. There's God knows what blocking the freeways and the highways and the back roads. You can't get around. So I don't care if your vehicle's working or not. You're going to have to stop. Yeah. It means not point. like The Walking Dead where there's a nice path between all no. the cars <laughs> that you can that get all the way out of Georgia and Atlanta. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm like, I mean, wow, it's... look at that. That's a nice, clean path all the way through. Yeah, yeah. Well, look that's at there, true. man. You just go right by this. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's... Um... Shoulders are always open. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shoulders never, are always open. They never get blocked. Speaking of preparations for this, right? Obviously... Like I said earlier, we can't predict when it's going to happen. We can't we can't stop it from happening. When it happens, it happens. Um, how how do we prepare for that? What can we do now to make those potentially over a year before anything starts to go back in yeah, the right exactly. direction? Potentially even um, longer than that. Yeah, potentially even longer. Yeah, I'm just. I mean, if that were to happen on a, on a on a pretty large scale where a majority of the United States or any continent is affected. Um, millions of people are going to die of starvation, uh, civil unrest. Like you said earlier, people are just kind of like, well, what does it matter? You know, why do I even protect myself from it? Because, you know, like there's nothing I can do. I can't predict it's coming. You can't see, you know, a nuclear weapon being shot over the United States. But, just like every other disaster, your own personal like preparedness makes a big difference. You don't have yeah. to turn to government aid. You don't have to turn to, you know, going and dealing with the masses at the grocery store when everybody's just in huge panic. Everything that we do relies on, you know, the grocery store order supplies online. The trucks transport by orders that are made through a digital system. Medical records, everything that we, you know, that yeah. I do at work is all Digital. So it's, I think the hardest thing t for us to like realize and to imagine is to, to live without any electronic devices. Yeah. Maybe some will survive, but you have to just plan on not having any of it. So, right. um, food and water are not electronic <laughs> and you can get those today right. and starting with 72 hours and then working it up to two weeks and then work to a month, three months. I mean, if you can get a year supply, that's a lot and that's a lot of work, but even if you're getting yeah. a two week supply, that that avoids so much of uh, the chaos. You can stay home and you can, um, yeah. and keep your family safe. So I, I mean, that's that's where most people don't realize that they can make a difference by preparing their home plan with, for one, having an emergency plan for the whole family, and then two, getting food and water for two full weeks is going to put you so much further ahead of everybody else and keeping you safe at home away from all the chaos and it kind of it lets you take that time to form formulate a plan with your family and, and under and kind of 
take things a little slower. When people say they can't do anything, that drives me nuts because I'm like, you can. I mean, yeah, yeah, we're going to lose a lot and we're going to lose technology and we're going to lose entertainment and we're going to lose TikTok. That's a big deal. But um, <laughs> but but having the food and water and the peace of mind of staying home and safe, like right. that's that's what matters the most is keeping you and your family yeah. safe. And you can prepare for that. Anybody can prepare for that. Well, well and the great yeah, thing about absolutely. that is, too, it's not just preparing for an EMP. Like all right. the things he's talking about right now, this prepares you for any other type of disaster that's going to come along. Having two weeks right. of food is fantastic. A power outage. The power. Storm. Yeah, I mean, there's so many different things. So yes, it's great yeah. for an EMP, but it's also for every other situation out there that's probably going to happen as well at some point. Yeah, and that's what you know. People like us like to preach is is I, I hope to God we never have to use this stuff. I hope mm, I hope exactly. that we never you know, never have to lean on our preparations, but the, the, the flip side of that is freaking just death. It's, it's yeah. freaking death Yeah. period. You know, him haul about it all you want saying, well, you know, that's what we have, you know, all these other provisions and these people to help us with. Listen, nobody's coming to help. you. Nope. But it, it's just not going to happen. And you need to think that way. You, you need to be self-sufficient, self-reliant. And, and start prepping now mm-hmm. it's going to help you in many other situations like you said um it's best to prep for the worst case scenario in, in my opinion and you surely do not want to have to go to town um mm-hmm. if, if you don't live in town like for myself i live rural and I'd, I'd have to go to town to to get supplies you don't want to be there no and no and you know yeah. within the first few hours it's probably not going to be that big a deal but give it a day or two. Um, yeah. People really start freaking out about it. And then they really start realizing that they're in a tight spot and they don't have the food or everything they have is in their refrigerator. They don't have any non-perishable items. They don't have any water stored. Um, they don't have any water to pay for the food. <laughs> they can't use it. That's the other their thing. Car you or anything. The grocery store. They're not going to be able to process anything. Nobody Most of us cash. use, yeah, uses credit cards or, freaking tap on her phone on something to buy something yeah. it's full spectrum here you need you need to obviously you know in my opinion i think the best would be sheltering in place at least mm-hmm. for yeah. a decent sure. amount of time um in in the beginning of, of an event like this you know your food your water you need hygiene stuff you need to be able to keep clean when people don't have the stuff that they need to uh, stay clean and you know when they go to the bathroom if you don't like what's so what's so hard about investing in a composting toilet even mm-hmm. if you never use it you got it stuffed in the attic or in a closet somewhere in the garage um a lot of disease is going to happen from people going to the bathroom and not disposing of it properly yeah totally exactly. um, i mean in like places where we live you're in an urban environment yeah, yeah. In places where we live right now, what I'm worried about is how do I keep myself and my family warm in this insane cold weather, too? So that's yeah, another exactly. thing that you have to think about, especially when the grid goes down. But you mentioned something earlier, like uh, uh, something that could happen with this like nationwide power outage is civil unrest. Once people start to figure, like, oh, my gosh, this thing is real. I can't go to Walmart and buy my bread and my eggs. This is This is legit – an issue and I didn't think about it. Right. So they're going to start to freak out and and a lot of things happen there. And one of those is civil unrest, which means a lot of different things. And especially if you live in an urban environment, right? Yeah. So mm-hmm. I think especially with this situation, if you're, if you're preparing specifically for an EMP, you have to have a really good bug out plan. And, and like Curran said, like, I agree with you. Like my number one plan is always to, to stay home, bug in. And it's have, easier for us. It's easier, this, right? We yeah. live outside of yeah. town. But if you live in the middle of New York or Chicago or LA or Houston or whatever it is, you cannot That's stay scary. there in this situation. It's going to be too bad. So you've got to make yeah. sure that you've got a bug out plan ready to go. And that means you have some sort of a bug out vehicle, hopefully. And, and in this situation, that is totally up in the air, right? You don't know what's going to be yeah. happening. Might have to be a bicycle. Might have to be. You might have to have a longboard yeah. and just you know, skate your way out of town. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. A scooter. Um, but you, you got to have that bug out, uh, vehicle. You've got to have bug out bags. You have to have the, the gear that you need to at least sustain you for 72 hours to get you from point A to point B, which point B is away from 
the crowds of people that are going to be causing all the problems, right? You got to have a location to go to because just heading out of town. You're all of your stuff. Yeah, (laughs) you have to have a good plan, especially in an EMP situation. So that's something I like to um, really, that point I like to hit home in this situation is you can't always just shelter in place, especially yeah. Uh, during these types of things, yeah. And another aspect of that, like like we said, you're, you're bugging out. Maybe your vehicle doesn't work because it's newer or it got fried by the EMP or whatever it is. So you've got to keep yourself in somewhat physical shape. You can't, you know, if you get winded walking up the stairs at the office, I don't know how great you're going to be hiking, you know, 30 miles somewhere else to to get away yeah. from the crowd. With, with a 50 pound pack on your back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not yeah. going to be easy. I promise you. Yeah. It's not easy when you're in shape. So um, that's something that you need to think about now because you can't start doing push ups as soon as the bomb goes off. It's not going to work. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no. You got to be it's in not. shape, ready to hike, ready to go, ready to to do whatever needs to be done at, at any minute. Because it's, it's going to happen like that, like Karen yeah. says, and with with you know no forewarning. Yeah. yeah. Going back to the bugging out thing, this is something that that I always think about when when you talk about bugging out. A lot of people say, "Well, okay, well I'm, I've got this and I got that, and I'm going to head out of town and go out into the country." And a lot of them don't have a location figured out. And here's the problem with that. I'll go ahead and tell you this. If you come bugging out into my area and you start snooping around on my property, trying to find a place to shelter, I'm going to come asking questions real, real quick. Cause, um, and not you got to say all these manner. (laughs) Well, I mean, you're you're a little on (laughs) edge probably. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to be on edge. I'm going to be wanting to protect me and mine, right? So if, and so is everybody else. That's exactly. Out so you kind country, of have to, right? So you're very cautious. You're going to be coming in on people's property and camping out on it. That you, be prepared to be confronted because they want to make sure that you're not going to be weaseling in there to try to take what they have. Um, yeah. So don't just say, well, I'm just going to go out in the country and go out into the woods and, and camp out. You're, you're more than likely going to be on somebody's property. Yeah. Or you are at least where I live on, you know, the East Coast. We don't have huge national forests like, mm-hmm. you know, out in the uh, Rocky Mountains where there's hundreds of thousands of acres, yeah. millions of acres of nothing, right? That's a big That's plus for maybe us Maybe a little different. Yeah, right? yeah we, have, but, we have, yeah, public land yeah. right right near us. But even it, even so, if you don't know the, the area, if you don't have a plan to stay in that area for an extended period of time, it's, it's not going to be fun, you know? Yeah, so... Basically, what I'm getting at on that is is have a plan on where to go. Try to search out places to go and go ahead and ask permission, get to know certain people and say, hey, if something were to happen, exactly, could I come over here and either create a, uh, create a deal with them that, that you're going to be a part of their group and help and be a part of the, the whole, you know, getting back to normal thing or at least, hey, man. Do you mind if I camp out in those woods over there and, and you'll never hear from me, you know, or whatever? Like, because I promise you, you, you get this massive amount of people going out and just stepping off the road and walking in the woods or on somebody's property. And that person's going to protect that property. I promise yeah. you, yeah. <laughs> especially in that kind of situation. And, you know, that that's the thing, man. It's like you don't know. So you got to prepare uh for for the unknown as best as best that you can i got hygiene be that washing yourself washing your clothes like that lump that all into um, the health thing lighting like coleman lanterns candles oil lanterns communications gear radios cooking alcohol stoves natural fire stoves water storage filtration devices medical first aid personal and prescription antibiotics uh obviously personal protection devices pew pew knives sharpeners faraday bags for any electronics that you would want to keep in there survival books canning books yeah any kind of books because you're not going to have a digital way to figure out how to do something um cash and small bills and documents and photos of any family mm-hmm. members because you may yeah. not be able to like if you're trying to find somebody hey have you seen so-and-so well my phone don't work i can't show you a damn right. picture of my daughter mm-hmm. so 
um, that's what I got. Another aspect I don't think we didn't uh, hit on too much is like, what if this EMP happens and you're, you know, 50 miles away from home, your vehicle's not working, you need to get back to your family, you need to get back to your home base. That's why I feel like a get home bag is so important, especially in these EMP scenarios. Basically, it's a bag that has all the gear that you're going to need to get from point A to point B, and point B is going to be your home, your home base, where all your preps are, where all your yeah. your family is and, and everything. So, so many people commute to yeah. work. Yeah, so you you're, you're, yeah. you're going to be away from home. There's a, I mean, high, uh, high chance you're going to be far from, or a good you know, several miles away from home when something mm-hmm. like this happens. Yeah. I mean, I mean, literally let's face it. I, I know my walking average is about a mile and 17, 18 minutes, just mm-hmm. leisurely walking. Um, yeah. It's going to take you some time to get home. Having a get home bag is definitely something everybody needs to have in their vehicle and they, and you need to keep it seasonal. So yeah. if it's, if it's during the winter time, you need to have provisions in there to help you keep warm or, help you, you know, build a fire or something like that. If it ends up being an overnight event and you have to, you know, shelter up somewhere and, and have a fire to keep warm or boil water or do what it is. And then the flip side down here in Southern Georgia, where I'm at, it's 105 degrees in the middle of the summertime. You know, you're not going to be wanting to walk around with long pants and a jacket mm-hmm. and all that stuff because you didn't change the contents of your get home bag. So exactly. There's tons of scenarios. Basically, with this whole EMP thing, any scenario you can come up with mm-hmm. is, is, is a possibility. You need to think about these things, man. Mm-hmm. Everything's not freaking just, you know, you're, you're just That's living the thing life, is, man. you got to step back and look at what, like, in your life, how much do you rely on electricity? It's just like everything you it's do. It's everything. Like yeah. every single thing you do. Yeah, and then we talked about, like, what if this is a one- to five to ten year event for some reason with with no electricity it's a long-term plan. what do you do how do you feed yourself do you have a plan like a long-term food procurement plan do you understand how to garden yeah. how to hunt yeah, how skills to fish is the other thing a uh, farm ranch yeah there's so many other yeah. aspects to this and here's the other thing you're not going to have refrigeration no yeah right? so you need you need to know how to preserve meat Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, so like there's doesn't saying, make you sick, and you end up dying, right? Canning. So, canning is an excellent way. It's something that I'm working on um, bolstering up myself. Our ancestors, you know, didn't have refrigeration, right? Um, they, they, they canned their mm-hmm. food. You know, you can can meat. You can, you can can all sorts of things, um, and it's pretty much ready to eat. Right. You just, yeah. you just basically need to warm it up if you want to eat it, you know, when it's not cold. Um, there's specific things you need to do to do it properly and to keep it safe because botulism is a possibility uh, if, you, if you don't do it right. And there's certain acids and certain bait, like some things you just shouldn't can. Uh, and you need to know those things. There's tons of books out there for for you to be able to do that and obviously right now while we do have electricity there's tons of information on the internet on how to how to can um but that is something that i think is very uh is very wise to get into if you're not already into it if you've got a spare bedroom if you can clean out a closet in your mm-hmm. home or anything like that where you can store this stuff start canning and start putting away foods so that uh it, it, but learn how to do it properly at least buy it, a book on how to do it <laughs> Yeah, and and I don't. It's really not expensive to get into, um, uh, from from the research I've been doing on it. There's there's a couple of different. You know, you can do water bath canning. You you can do canning with like a pressure like a pressure cooker type yeah. canner. Um, there's many ways to do it. Our ancestors did it, and they did it with not a whole lot of technology. You know, technology, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, they they just knew how to do it because those things were passed down for generations. Um, and then at some point, somebody dropped the ball and quit teaching people. And now here we are worrying about freaking EMP. YouTube's exactly. there, you know, so we all go to that. So well, yeah. another thing about Once all that's this, gone. like, it, it, you know, we talk about all these things. This could be so overwhelming to someone who's just getting into preparedness and is like, how do I do all of this? Like, you can't, you can't do it all. You can't do it all right now for sure. 
So just take it like small steps at a time, you know, start on yeah. your three day supply of food, water, meds, you know, and those things. And then just start building out your plan from there. You know what I mean? Don't, yeah. don't get overwhelmed and just say, never mind, It's too much. Just start small. Right. Do something. A little Everybody bit. Everybody needs to do yes, something. Yes. A little bit is yeah. better than nothing because even if this EMP doesn't hit, there's a million other scenarios where this stuff is going to be so crucial for you and your family to stay safe and healthy and away from the the mad hordes of idiots running around. Yeah, world, realistic. You know? Absolutely. Like, yeah. And a good a good way that I look at it to think about it is is start. You know, think think about it as a bubble, right? Start mm-hmm. start with your personal bubble. Yep. Your home, like preparations for your home and your family, be it their medications, you know, hygiene, water, food, uh, you know, securing your shelter, all that. Start there. And once you kind of get that going pretty good then expand it out, you know, mm-hmm. to, okay, a state level. What if there was a state level thing, like a regional thing, like for me, hurricanes. Okay. Now, right. now I'm going to start adding hurricane preps into the mix. Mm-hmm. All right. So once you kind of get that going, step it out a little bit more. What if it's a civil unrest event? What if, what if it's a governmental event? What if it's something regional to my, you know, Southeast area? Yeah. Start prepping for that, then go national, then go and and all those things compound on each other. Absolutely, you know? I love so, that. And like another way to look at that when you're starting is do something called a threat assessment. You know, write down those things that are most likely going to happen to you. Like you said, you live on the coast near Georgia. I mean, hurricane is going to happen at some point, right? Going to happen. It's going to happen. So that needs to be near the top of your list on this threat assessment. You know, do you do you right. work a long ways away from? from home do you have um health issues all these things and write down make a list and which ones are the most probable which ones are going to cause the most problems start at the top of that list and start mitigating the issues that each one of those are going to cause and it's a great way to 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 get going in preparedness and to be as effective as possible with your time and your money as you're starting out you know so the best thing to do is start preparing now for for anything and everything because in that type of event, anything and everything will happen. Yeah. And it and it, it it's a game that you're gonna have to play and you'll have no choice in the matter. Yeah. At it's, all. It's a Jumanji situation. <laughs> it's a Jumanji situation. <laughs> you're playing <laughs> yes. till it's over. <laughs>